Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 24. <clears throat> Matthew 16, 24. I will read this. Uh, let us read this uh, in unison. Are you there? Okay, ready? Read. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Father, we thank you for this time. Bless us, Lord, as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So we are going to study, obviously, today about self-denial. So this is something that is very hard because we are full of ourselves. Amen? Amen. And to deny what we are filled of is something that is quite hard. Actually, it is uh, unthinkable to many people, even I believe even to us, but that is what the Lord Jesus Christ is asking those people who would decide to follow Him. So it is a tall order. It is something that, I, as I have said a while ago, is not popular because uh, what we want is about ourselves, our gratification, what will satisfy us, what will make us happy, what is going to make us joyful. These are the things that we are pursuing in life. That is why uh, almost all the Greek philosophers, they taught uh, people about how to achieve the sunum bonum of life, or that is the highest good of life. There is even a, a film that was made entitled Pursuit, The Pursuit of Happiness, because this is what we want to actually achieve in our lives. But when it comes to serving the Lord, it is the other way around. You are going to serve Him denying yourself, not thinking about what will I get in serving the Lord. That is not how you serve God. But you serve God because you love Him, and because of that love, you are willing to suffer anything or even everything just to glorify the God that we are serving. Why? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the Lord has prepared everything for us over there in heaven. So what, whatever we are pursuing here on earth is already reserved to us in heaven. But the thing is that our faith is like a uh, roller coaster. Sometimes it is high. When our faith is high, then we just serve God with reckless abandon. But when our faith is uh, low, then we doubt almost everything that we heard or we have heard from the word of God. So it is about like what was preached last week. It is just about consistency. How are we going to have a consistent faith so that as we move forward for the Lord, we will keep on moving forward. So self-denial is something that is uh, demanded by the Lord because self-denial is a substantive element in following Jesus Christ. Without which then it is just impossible to follow the Lord. Nobody can follow the Lord that is thinking about himself. If you will remember Demas, Demas left the Apostle Paul having loved this present word. What is in the word? According to the Bible, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So it all pertains to self. It all pertains to what is coming in of us than things going out from us. So that is why it is quite impossible to serve God without actually denying ourselves. If you're serving God with self still on the throne, then what we are doing is because of the flesh and it will not be accepted by the Lord. The Apostle Paul says that we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. So anything less than that is unreasonable when we are serving the Lord. Now, is, is Jesus that cruel that he is demanding this to those people who are serving him? Of course not. He loved us. He has proven that. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were enemies of God, but in spite of that, he came into this world, died a cruel death, so that He can save us. So there is no question about His love for you and for me. 
So to think that the Lord might be cruel in demanding this to those who are serving Him is something that should not even cross our mind. It is something that Jesus wanted us to do because that is the only way that we can be successful in serving Him. As I have said, it is a very substantive element in following the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to serve the Lord, then self must be conquered and must be kept in check. The conflict between our will and God's will will be a constant battle that we are going to face every day in our lives. Actually, every Sunday there is a battle. Am I going to attend or not? If you will think about yourself, then you can think of many reasons not to attend. Like for example, you have to wash your clothes. You have to prepare your lessons and all of these things. But if you, if you have learned how to deny self, then you will not even think of attending or not. It will be in your mind and in your heart to always be with the people of God and to congregate with the people of God every Sunday. Amen. So that is something that we should not struggle but that is the reality of life. So to deny oneself not only means in every moment of life to say no to self, but also to say yes to God. Sometimes you can say no to yourself, but at the same time you need to say yes to God. You deny yourself and you do something for the Lord. Because there are people who, uh, this is what you call the hermit, they deny themselves but they do not do anything from, for God. So they, they are just good in denying themselves. They will go to a, uh, a secluded place, like some of the monks that are doing that, and then they will just stay there to die, denying themselves all of the, uh, uh, the things of this world, the things that this world can offer, but they're not doing anything for God. So it is possible to deny self and still not be successful because... Once you deny yourself, you say no to self, then you must say yes to God. It is like getting saved. You say no to idols and you say yes to the true and the living God. It is turning your back from and then turning it to and then doing something to where you turn uh, yourself to. That is serving God, believing in God, and doing things that will glorify God. Sana magawa na natin ang paraan to. Iglo na lang kaya natin para hindi na bumukas. Mahirap sa nagpe-preach. Okay, so, as I have said, to deny oneself means to dethrone self and to enthrone the Lord Christ as the master of our life. In Japan, during the olden times, about 13th century, there was this, uh, what you call, the word kamikaze. I believe some of us are familiar with the word kamikaze. Kamikaze is a, is a word that means divine wind in English. It's not about suicide. It became that later on. But kamikaze, eh, the Japanese called it a divine wind. Because during the 13th century, when Kublai Khan is trying to conquer China, and then afterwards they're going to conquer Japan, while they're on their way to conquering China, that is the, the time of the Song Dynasty, while they were going there, there was this typhoon that was so strong that it destroyed the uh, fleet that is supposed to conquer China and later on Japan. And because of that, they, they realized that it came from God. They called it kamikaze. That is turning the wind that is a divine wind that actually saved Japan from being conquered by the Mongolians as I have said led by Kublai Khan and then World War II came and the, the American fleet is now going to Japan and they are going to uh, conquer Japan because of the uh, uh, wars that Japan is causing the world then they so the impending doom that they will be defeated. So, more than 1,500 pilots bound themselves to commit kamikaze. Meaning to say, they are going to turn the wind 
and destroy the American fleet so that the American fleet will not be able to reach Japan and defeat Japan during that time. So, approximately 12,000 pilots committed suicide mission. So that is why when we hear the word kamikaze, we think of the suicide mission that the Japanese did. But kamikaze is a divine win. So they are using kamikaze in order to turn the tide to the Americans, over to the Americans. And they destroyed, I think, three uh, a carrier and many battleships, especially in Pearl Harbor, that but just only delayed the impending doom that happened to Japan. And ladies and gentlemen, in our time, we need Christian kamikazes. Christians who will go anywhere and everywhere God wanted them to do, not thinking about their lives, but just thinking how to serve and how to glorify God. But this is something that we need to realize. Many things that are being preached behind the pulpit today are very abstract and we do not even know the meaning of it anymore. When the pastor says, give your life over to the Lord, it is something that is abstract. How can I do it? How will I do it? And even if it will be explained, then there is no way that we're going to do it. Why? Because we're even having a hard time attending services. We're even having a hard time giving what is due to God. We're even having a hard time reading the Word of God. We do not even go to God in prayer. How much more can we sacrifice our lives to God? If this little things we cannot even do in our lives. So most of the things that are being preached and most of the things that we are hearing there in the pulpit is all abstract to us except giving. I believe that is the only thing being preached behind the pulpit that is very clear. And that people are being taught specifically in detail how to do it. So that people can get the money of the people of God. Sometimes for their own cause, but praise God for others for the cause of Christ. But then again, it is something that is abstract today and it is not clear what we actually meant when we say, say these things. When Jesus Christ says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. During that time, there is a specific meaning to this. And the meaning is this. If you will follow me, then your death will become imminent. You're going to die. You, you, it's just a matter of... Uh, not a matter of if, it is just a matter of when are you going to die. Because it's that you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be in prison. You're going to, be, you're going to go under tribulation. All of these things are mentioned. And Jesus Christ made this very, very clear that the servant is not greater than his master. Whatever they have done to the Lord Jesus Christ is something that they're going to do to us. So if you decide then to follow him, then you already abandoned your life. And you are going to follow him to the point of no return. Ngayon, pag wala nang support, mm, this is the end of carrying my cross. This is the end of denying myself. This is the end that I am going to serve God. That is not self-denial. Amen? That is not self-denial. That is self-preservation. That is what we are doing, but most of the time, we are not actually denying ourselves. We know that crucifixion was a common Roman method in order to execute the criminals during that time. So when the Lord Jesus Christ said this, it is very, very clear to them that they're going to experience a cruel, excruciating death that these people or criminals are experiencing in the hands of the Roman soldiers. So following Jesus means sacrifice. It means true commitment. It, mean, it means the risk of dying and it means no turning back. Taking up the cross meant that death was imminent for a cross bearer. Because that is the sign that you're going to be executed. 
That is a sign that you're going to be crucified. And there is no more pardon beyond that for the criminals. And the same thing, that when you are truly committed to God, then there will be no retreat, no surrender. There is going to be no regret. So self-denial is a substantive element in following Jesus Christ. Not only that, but self-denial is a significant principle in accomplishing difficult task. I will repeat. Self-denial is a significant principle in accomplishing difficult task. Why? Anybody who has not denied themselves will not even attempt to do something that is difficult, something that will inconvenience them, and something that will make them uncomfortable. Most of us, we have jobs, and when it is not comfortable anymore, we just quit our job and find something better and something more comfortable. Why? Because we have not denied self. We are thinking of our self. So if you will learn how to deny self, then there is nothing difficult when it comes to the ministry. That is why the Apostle Paul can say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. He says, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So that is how to deny self. Because once you deny self, then Christ will take over. But once you are still on the throne of yourself, then how can Christ take over our lives? If we are the ones running it. So there must be complete abandon and, take, and giving all the control to our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Mark chapter 9 verses 28 to 29. The Bible says, And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? There was a demon-possessed person, and they have done everything, but they couldn't cast that, that demon out of that person. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. So that is a means of denying ourselves because praying and fasting is something that is hard to do. It's not easy. Well, it might be easier for Brother June because Brother June is trying to lose weight. And that is not even self-denial because you're doing it for yourself. But prayer and fasting for the glory of God is something that is very hard. It is it can only be accomplished by denying ourselves. I also skipped meals because I wanted to lose weight. I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for God. Oh, there, must be, there may be some element that because I wanted to, keep, to be a fit so that I can serve God more and better if I have a, uh, a fitter body than if I'm going to be obese serving God. You know, it's hard to do it. When you preach, it will take just a few minutes for you to get tired. When, when, when you go out, it will take just a few minutes for you to get tired. But if you're fitter, then you can do more for the Lord. But then again, uh, coming to, to, re, to, to just realize it, then you're doing it actually more for yourself than for the Lord. So, if you have denied self, then prayer and fasting will never be an issue. Because you will not think of self anymore. And nothing will be hard if you... Learn how to deny yourself. It will not be hard to uh, let go of your money. It will not be hard to spend all your energy for the Lord. It will not be ha hard to uh, even put personal goals aside and desires in order to put God first, seek ye first, the kingdom of God, in order to uh, do God's business, not your own. Why? Because if you are nothing, then you can do something or all things for God. Amen? But if you always think of yourself, then things will be hard. Like for example, some will not even want to go soul winning during hot days. Why? Because they might turn a darker skin. But that is preserving yourself. You do not want to go into the interior barangays in the Philippines, for example, or even in Cambodia, because you might be in danger of being beaten by a dog. And all of the, I, I'm not saying that we have to be reckless. But what I'm saying is that we need to be trustful and depending on the Lord. 
when we are doing these things and we can do these things without any problem if we have learned how to deny ourselves. There is no difficult task for a person who have denied himself. Do you remember during the, the, the olden times when slaves are you know, rampant over in America, something that, uh, that is uh, uh, common in America? Those slaves who came from Africa, they were shipped to America, and they will do everything that their master asked them to do. Why? Because if you're a slave, you have no right. You have no personality. You do not even have to, to uh, consider yourself human. But everything that your master will ask you to do, then they're going to do it. In Egypt, if a pharaoh will die, or a dignitary will die, even the servants will go inside the pyramid and be buried together with their master. Complete abandon of self. If you have not denied self, can you do that? Of course not. I remember one time when one of our members died, and the uh, wife is crying, vehemently, almost non-stop. And my pastor said, can you push the wife inside the, uh, the what do they call that? The grave. <laughs> and let us see what will happen. You see, you will not be willing to do that. If you have not denied self. I'm not saying that you be buried with your master. But what I'm trying to illustrate is that nothing is difficult for a person to do for God if that person have denied self. Kapatid, makinig ka. Kaya yung ating mali, yung ating kasalanan, paulit-ulit, kasi hindi natin madenay yung self. Sometimes you think at your life and you pity yourself because of what is happening in your life, not realizing it is your own doing. Because you keep on preserving yourself, you keep on minding yourself, and you, all, you keep on putting yourself into the equation so that whatever may happen, actually yourself is the one who did it. To extremes. You, 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 may, you may say that, well, I cannot control it. That self. Why can you not control? Why are you trying to control? Because it is still within your power. You have not denied yourself. I cannot control but to hit. I cannot control but to curse. I cannot control but to uh, defraud. I cannot control but to do this and to do that. Why? Because you are in control and you have found out that you cannot even control yourself. So why not give the control to the hands of God and He can do something about it. So that, that is the reason why if a person will learn to deny self, then no task is ever difficult for those people who have learned how to deny self. You can send them everywhere without question. As long as it is the will of God, they're going to do it. Not only that, but self-denial helps to strengthen those that are weak. Self-denial helps to strengthen those that are weak. Look at Romans chapter 15, verse number 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. You see? If you are in self-denial or if you, if you have denied self, then you are not going to please yourself, but you are going to use or allow God to use that self in order to bear the infirmities or the weakness of the weak. So we are going to let our lives be used so that we can help people, we can build people, and we can help people out of their misery. So that is what self-denial can do. But if you're always thinking of yourself, then you will have the tendency to say, I'm even, I'm even having a hard time uh, making ends meet for myself, then why will I help? other people. I just say, it is always self. We, don't, we do not realize that one of our uh, greatest enemy is our self. As long as our self is there, then it will be hard for God to penetrate. But if we will remove self, 
then God is going to have a free reign in our lives. You see, the comforts that come from blessing and strength are not for the sole purpose of self-indulgence. Because most of the times, it's what we think. I work for, the, for it. I've earned this. So I'm going to enjoy it. It may not be wrong, but if you are solely using it for yourself, then you're not a good steward of God. Because God bless you to be a blessing. Not to use it solely for yourself. As I have told you, we are a steward of the things of God. Amen. We are a steward of our family. We are a steward of ourselves. And we are a steward of those people that are less fortunate than us. So God is supplying all of the needs so that we can use this in the different areas of our stewardship. Kaya pag may nahihirapan, tinutulungan. Nahihirapan na, hindi nagpapahirap. Maintindihan nyo? Meron kasi iba, nagpapahirap. Hindi tinutulungan yun. Tinuturuan yun na leksyon. Pero yung nahihirapan, those that are having a hard time, they're doing their best, but their best is not enough. Then it is our responsibility as a steward of God and as a person who denied self to bear the burden of that person, to help that person so that he or she or her or his faith will be strengthened by our action towards that person. Don't you know that when you help a person who, are, who is in need and is doing his best, but that best is not enough, and then you, you come to the rescue, don't you know that he will see the hands of God in all of these things and his faith will be strengthened? So that is something that we need to do or we ought to do as a child of God. Actually, a good motto that we must uh, apply in our life is this. Whether poor or rich, is to be a ministry to others. We are all ministers. And we need to minister to each and every one of us. Even the Lord Jesus Christ came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. So that is what we need to do. And we can only do that if we have learned how to deny self. And then... Denying self safeguards our life from being disqualified because of moral failure. The only reason why we are doing self-gratifying things is because we love self. It's because we have not denied self. The reason why we are greedy is because of self. The reason why we want more than we should have is because of self. The reason why you want to become popular is because of self. If, that's why you want to become wealthy and anything that will uh, put you on a pedestal in the eyes of this world is because of self. But once we deny self, then we can be guarded to be disqualified because of moral failures that can happen to a person who loves self. If you're going to look at uh, somebody, pa, yung ideal pastor, First Timothy chapter 3, if, if you're going to look at this, you will see that most of the things here are talking about denying self. This is a true saying, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work, meaning to say, if you wanted to become a pastor. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. You see? Solomon is a very selfish person. That's why he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That is because of self. If not for self, you're not going to do that. If your self is denied, then you will be satisfied with a wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality. A selfish person will not be hospitable. Right? given to hospitality, apt to teach. A selfish person will not even spend time studying much. Because, but, but a person of denied self will 
do all that he could in order to learn so that he can feed the people that they may be presented blameless before God. Not given to wine, no striker. Why do you fight? Because of pride. Not greedy of filthy lucre, not greedy of money, but patient. A person who denied self will be patient, not a brother, not covetous. And then if you're going to read most of this, it pertains to denying self. So, the office of a bishop is actually an office for people who have denied self. Not for people who is full of themselves. Because they're going to use the office for their gain and not for the profit of the people of God. So that is uh, why self-denial is very important. Amen? Amen? If you're going to look at the life of Paul, Paul denied the desires of his flesh to keep himself in check. Actually, in 1 Corinthians 9.27, he says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Many preachers now are not effective in their preachings anymore because people knew that they are not practicing what they're preaching. And that is something that is very, very hard for a man of God. And it will happen if we are not going to deny ourselves. The good thing about serving God is that, as I have said yesterday, while you are still alive, there is always a chance to stand up and to do something for the Lord. Amen? So that's why if we haven't denied self yet, I believe this is the right time to do that and serve the Lord. Now, what are the elements of a self-denial? The elements of self-denial. We still have 17 minutes Number one, self-denial may involve surrendering special treasures in your life. Self-denial may involve surrendering special treasures in your life. Look at Exodus 33, 5 to 6. Exodus 33, 5 to 6. Tari tari, 5 to 6. For the Lord that said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people, I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. God is a terrible God. And consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, the golds, silvers, and all of these things, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. So sometimes, when we deny self, we have to surrender some of the things that we are holding on to life and give it into the hands of God. Mark 10, 21. Mark 10, 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. This is a person who obeyed the law almost all of his life. This is a person who is so diligent in his own way of serving God and glorifying God. He said, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, follow me. You see, following Christ means not holding anything for yourself. Why? Because God is very clear. Your treasures are in heaven. It is there, secured. So do not try to secure most of the things here on earth. Give it up. Don't hold on to it. Why? Because God is the one who will take care of those people that are following Him. What did the Bible says Hebrews? in Hebrews? God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love. The greatest employer in the universe is God. 
Amen. You cannot complain. You have no reason to complain if you are under the employment of God. Because He knew what to do. He supplied all our needs. He gives us the strength. He gives us what we need in order to accomplish things that He wanted us to do in our lives. So that is the reason why it involves surrendering treasures in our life. You see, a great hindrance to 100% total commitment to the Lord is the treasures in the believer's life. Sometimes they may even be our family. Your wife or your husband or your children hindering you to serve the Lord. And you see, sometimes you have to just let go. I'm not trying to say that you divorce your wife. I'm not say, trying to say that you divorce your husband. But if these things are the problem in your life, then do not give them that prominent position in your life. Put God first. And then things will fall into their proper places. If they will keep on denying you the chance and the liberty to serve God, then just go ahead and serve God. Because as I have said, at the end of this life, we're going to give account to God, not to them. But be sure that even as you serve God, you are becoming a good steward to them. Because sometimes the reason why they are hindering us is because when we surrender to serve God, we have completely forgotten about them. That is wrong. Example, you're a family man. You have five children. You got saved. You surrender yourself to God. And then you abandon your family. You're an infidel. You're not even a saved person. That's what the Bible says. So you need to see to it that you will continue to become a good steward. That is part of your self-denial. And then put God first in your life. And God will help you accomplish the things that God wants you to accomplish in your life. Because sometimes are too zealous, but too extreme. That they will leave the family altogether and that will not even... Well, that happened to me, actually. My wife is uh, leaving a testimony of this. I cannot even put my children to public school when I was pastoring over there in the Philippines because I said that our life should be a life of sacrifice. And that is the price that they have to pay because they are the children of a pastor. So he said that, you mean to say, if your father is a pastor, then you have no more uh, privilege to even study in public school or whatever school that's going to be? I said, yes. Because our life must be uh, spent just serving the Lord. That's it. And then he wrote, she wrote a letter to me. Uh, and, and the content of that letter is uh, she wanted to leave me because of my mentality during that time. You see, that is not self-denial. That is not serving God. That is becoming a poor steward of the things that God has entrusted them to you. I cannot even give time to them. And then she said one time, Will you please remember, I am also a member of your church. And I am also entitled to counseling. Like you counsel the members of the church. Because I do not even talk to her anymore. Milka became, I believe, three years and I could not even remember that I carried her on my arms. Why? Because I'm too busy serving the Lord. But that is not right. Meaning to say, when I said that we need to let go of the treasures in our life, then what I'm trying to say is that the most prominent in our life must be God. And if they are in the way, not allowing us to do that, just keep on serving God. And then God will give us the wisdom on how to deal with them. Amen? They remember when Peter served God, they abandoned everything straightway, abandoned everything and served God. But when his mother-in-law was sick, Peter was there, tending to his mother-in-law. You see, you still have responsibilities on earth. Even though you have, uh, you, you have totally committed your life to God. But what the Lord is saying is that you need to be wise 
Because there is a, there are more important things than the things on this world. Because our tendency is towards the world, not towards the spiritual things of life. Our tendency is toward the things that will not last forever, not towards the things that will last forever. Look at what he said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. 6, verse 20. This is what Jesus is trying to say. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust that corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Meaning to say, if you're going to save, save more for heaven. Save more for the things that will last forever. Not for the things of this world only, but more so for the things of God. Not only that, we need to remember that our relationship with the Lord is to be our greatest treasure. My relationship with God is more than my relationship with my wife, with my children, with the church, with anybody here in this world or anything in this world. He must have the uh, preeminence in my life. He must occupy the paramount, paramount place in my life. He must be number one, not two, not three, not four. He's number one, not two, not three, not four. He's number one, hey, hey, hey. He's number one, hey, hey, hey. Okay, mo kahit sa cheering. Dapat number one pa rin ng Panginoon. Amen? He cannot be less than number one. That is the reason why, listen to me, a Christian should not marry an unbeliever. Amen? Why? Because it will... Uh, get your time from the Lord. You will be disobedient to God. So you are not to marry an unbeliever. That is an unequal yoke. You are, you are putting yourself into the hardest of place to serve God if you married an unbeliever. Not only an unbeliever, do not even marry a carnal Christian. Why? Because a carnal Christian is so worldly and selfish that he or she may not allow you to serve God and do not even marry a backslidden Christian because he will not be with you every Sunday serving the Lord. So we need to maintain those things. And this is what actually Peter is saying. But if you are in this place, there is still remedy. You see, that is what is good about God. God says, don't do this, and then you mess up. God will give away for you to escape this. But then, if you will mess up again, maybe God will say that you have to suffer the consequences. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 to, 1 to 5, or 1 to 7. No. Yeah, yeah. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Let's begin reading in verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, wives, amen. Wives, can you say Amen. But nag amen ka na? Wife ka na ba? Masyado kang nagmamadali. Rejoice, ha? One more week. Likewise, ye wives. Amen? Be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. You see? You married an unbeliever. And then Peter said, you be submitted or be subjected even to your unbelieving husband. Why? So that because of your conversation, but that's why I keep on nagging him, conversation here is life. Your manner of life. You do not nag him to heaven. Nobody can do that. So that, with uh, conversation, without the word, may be won by the conversation of the wife. Sometimes they will not even listen to the word of God, but they will see your life. And if you behave yourself, it will open up 
It will open them, them up to listen to the Word of God. Next verse. While they behold your case conversation coupled with fear. You see? You do not knock them. You do not attend every Sunday. I go to, to church every Sunday. What do you do? You are a children of the devil. You don't do that to your husband. I to, as I have told you, you can nag him. You cannot nag him to heaven. You can nag him to hell. But never to heaven. Verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Hindi ka rin dapat maarte raw. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. He, it's not talking about you are a woman and you have a man's heart. But it's talking about the, uh, uh, what is inside of you. In that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. You see, a wife that is quiet can win a husband over to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Not a nagger but a person who subject himself to his husband to her husband which is in the sight of God of great price Ay. amen amen ladies oh see hindi kayo nakahalata dapat tahimik lang kayo <laughs> but uh, next verse 5 for after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God, adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Verse 6 and 7. Even as Zara obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Hmm. So from now on, you call us Lord. Lily, you call Lord Rilson. What do you want to eat? Uh, <laughs> okay. Whose daughters ye are. As long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Verse number 7. Likewise, ye husbands, mm, yari tayo dyan. Meron din tayo. Dwell with them according to knowledge. If you're a husband and you married an unbeliever, unbelieving wife, do not remove that. We should be fair. Amen? Denying self means you ought to be fair. Giving honor unto the wife. You cannot beat your wife to heaven. Mm. Amen. You cannot do that. Pagsasampalin kita para mapunta ka sa langit eh. Hindi mo magagawa yun. Amen. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. You see, what do you do with the weaker vessel? You take care of it. You try to be, be very, very diligent not to let it drop from your hands, but you guard it with your life. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. You see, if you do not have a right relationship between a husband and a wife, then our prayers will be hindered. Sometimes you wonder, why? Is God not answering our prayers? Maybe there is a problem with your relationship. Give it to God. Let God fix it and then God will take care of the rest. Amen? So that is something that we need to understand. That we need to, that self-denial involves sacrificing, uh, letting go of some of the treasures that we hold in our lives. And then, self-denial involves sacrificing to serve the needs of Others. I'm not going to explain this anymore. Just read some verses and then, because we have to end. It's at 10 o'clock. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13. 1 Kings 17, 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. We know that it's the last meal. But Elijah said, do it for me. Do not be afraid. God will bless your sacrifice. And then, uh, Ruth chapter 2, verse 11. I think Ruth is now in Italy. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law. 
You need to be good to your mother-in-law. There is a blessing there. Amen. Amen. Sister Jalil, huh? You need to be good to your mother-in-law. Sister Jonah, huh? Sino pa? Lahat na may asawa. Army, Lily, huh? You need to be your mother-in-law still. You have to be good. He said, All that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband. And how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and are come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. He, she sacrificed her life for Naomi. And because Boaz saw that, God touched the heart of Boaz to become her kinsman's redeemer. And she had the best life ever. Why? Because of his her sacrifice to serve the needs of other people. So self-denial involves sacrifice in our life. Then self-denial involves shunning the exaltation of self. Self-denial involves shunning the exaltation of self. And this is the problems, the problem in many of our pulpits. Pastors standing behind the pulpit wanted to be exalted. Sometimes not realizing that they are exalting themselves even higher than God. That is sad to say. Look at Proverbs 25, 6. We need to put this in, in, in our hearts. Proverbs 25, 6. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king and stand not in the place of great men as much as possible. Do not insert yourself to those people that are in high places. You see, this is what is happening right now. You make your pastor look like they are even better than the mayor of the town. So that when they are together, the people will be confused who is the mayor and who is the pastor. Exulting. As much as possible, even when you go to a, a, a gathering and all of these things, do not go to the prominent place. But go to the least prominent place showing humility. No, I, I, there's the governor right there. Picture, picture. Don't do that. Be humble. Do not exalt yourself. May mga pastor, pag hindi pinansin, magtatampo. Pinakbabalik yan, hindi ka pinansin. Sino ba sila? Hindi ka nga pinansin, eh, sino ka ba? Eh, misa, hindi na iisip yun eh. Proverbs 27.2 Look at this. Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. Hmm. Wag yung pogi ko naman. Wag ganoon. Hayaan mong iba magsabi. It should not be your own mouth. A stranger and not thine own lips. Better if the one who will praise you is your enemy. It means that it is true. You know, they may say, I do not like that person but I cannot find anything wrong with him. You see? That is a great testament to who you really are. But if you praise yourself, that is self-serving. Or if you praise your pastor, that is also self-serving. Let a stranger or another man praise you. Sabi nga sa Tagalog, in, the, in Tagalog, we said, huwag mong buhati ng sarili mong bangko. Kaya ako pag ano, pakibuhat nga. Ah, <laughs> oh, see? Hindi ka pahirap. Self-exaltation is a byproduct of comparing your life and accomplishment with people whose life and accomplishment is usually lesser than you. Because you will not compare yourself to people that are better than you because number one, it will discourage you. But when you con co compare your, uh, yourself to person lesser than you, it will give you pride. So you are in a no-win situation. Just mind your own business and serve God. Amen? Don't mind uh, what other people are accomplishing. If they can accomplish something that is good, praise God for it. 
And you can keep on serving the Lord with humility. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. 2 Corinthians 10, 12 and then 18. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You are a fool if you can compare yourself to other people. Who loves to compare themselves to other people? For not he that commended himself is approved, but whom the Lord commended. So we are looking for the commendation of God, not for the commendation of men. Uh, I was in Kaluokan. It was Wednesday night, and I preached there. But before the preaching, I was introduced. And while they are introducing me, I do not know who will be the preacher that night. Because it is as if the person who, that you are going to preach that night is a great person. Is a uh, well-known person. And all of these things. And I said, I thought I'm the one preaching. And then, but all of a sudden, he called me to preach. And when I stood up, I said, I, I, I do not even know who you are trying to introduce. Why? We do not deserve any of those things. What we want is the commendation of God. Amen. Not the commendation of men. Because men usually flatters. Inuuto ka ng tao. In, 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 in one uh, service, the pastor, the, the, the speaker said, you know, you, think, you, you need to thank God because, because you have a, a very caring and loving pastor who only wants the best for you. Because your pastor at one time invited the greatest preacher in the world but he was turned down and then after that he invited the wisest preacher in the world he was turned down and then he invited the greatest preacher in the world he was turned down he invited the most handsome preacher in the world he was turned down but I cannot turn him down the fifth time so I am now standing before you you see you do not do that Amen? You don't do that. Even if another person praise you, maybe because that is who you really are, but I don't think that you have to accept the praise of men. But we must shoot for the commendation of God. Because if you have denied self, then you don't even care what they say about you. You only care what God will tell you. And the most important thing for you is that to hear the well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter down to the joy of thy Lord. Number four, self-deny involves striving to keep oneself pure. If you're uh, taking notes, just, I will just give the verses and I will uh, have to stop because we're over time. Okay, Daniel 1.8. Daniel perked on his heart that he will not de defile himself. Galatians 5.24. If you are in Christ, you have crucified yourself and you're up affection to last Proverbs 13 15 Jeremiah 2 19 and the number 5 self-denial involves subtracting hindrances from our lives self-denial involves subtracting hindrances from our lives Matthew 18 8 Hebrews 12 1 1 Peter 2 1 Colossians 3 8 Number six, self-denial involves shunning behavior that causes a brother to stumble into sin. Shunning behavior that causes a brother to stumble into sin. Romans chapter 14, 21. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby the brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is, ma is made weak. You, it may be your right, it may not be wrong, but if somebody will stumble because of that, don't do it. And then lastly, number seven, self-denial involved shelving your security and comfort zone to do what God wants you to do. Meaning leaving your security and comfort zone to do what God 
wants you to do Matthew chapter 4, verse 20. Matthew 4, 22. So these are the things that, these are the elements of self-denial. So as I have said, what we have studied today is something that is very hard to do and it can only be done through the power of God. Amen? Amen. So that is why we, we, we have to think about this, pray about this, and really look within ourselves and see if we can really deny ourselves because that is the only way that we can be successful in serving the Lord. Shall we stand that place?